Hello, welcome to Grant Loves Books. The book review for today is Diary of a Mad Old Man by Yunichiro Tanizaki. This is the first novel by Tanizaki I've ever read, but I think whenever you see the diary of in the title, it's going to be fun. This, this is a very, very short book, 177 pages, and it is a quick read. It is a man's diary. So what is the story? Well, there's an old man who seems to be fairly sick. He does spend quite a lot of time talking about the medication that he is on and that he is having to take an injection for this or he has to take a suppository for something else and the doctor is coming by to examine him one more time. There's quite a lot of that. So it does seem that he is on his last legs. Now he notices his daughter-in-law, his son's wife, seems to have taken a lover. He doesn't blame her for this because he's away on business, he's, he spends the night, he's away from home. You know, his son's name is Yokichi. His daughter-in-law's name is Satsuko. You know, Satsuko, how is everything with Yokichi? Is everything okay? Because he does spend an awful lot of time away from home. And she says, well, I, I think he's taken a mistress. He doesn't seem very interested in me anymore. Rather than being upset or alarmed, the old father seems to take it as a bit of happy news that he's not altogether displeased with her waywardness regarding her marital vows, if you catch my drift. From very early on in the book, the, like something <laughs> quite funny happens where he's with his daughter-in-law and they're out in a shopping mall. She sees a handbag, which is like some ridiculously expensive price. And she, oh, I would love to have that handbag, father. Said, well, it's a lot of money. Oh, yes, it is a lot of money. And the father said, why don't you ask Yokichi to buy it for you? And she said, oh, he's, he's mean. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to spend money on me anymore. Not like when we were dating. And the next day, the old man slips her the 25,000 yen that she needs to. She says, oh, okay, here you go. Take that and buy the purse. And he says, but mind your mother-in-law. Don't let my wife see that I've... Don't tell her I gave you the money to buy the purse. Said, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Well, it'll be a secret between you and me. So we, we get this very early relationship more than just in-laws let's say so he's given her the money to buy the handbag i guess she's repaying him with a bit of her company and he's asking her so you know didn't you used to be a dancer and she's oh i used to be a dancer but um it was just horrible for my feet but it spoiled my feet they looked simply awful so you gave it up i can't bear having my feet like that. Like what? Oh, just horrible. The toes all calloused and swollen, the toenails coming off. But your feet are so pretty now. They used to be a lot prettier. The calluses make them so ugly that when I stopped dancing, I tried everything. Pumice stone, emery boards, whatnot, day after day, and they still aren't the way they used to be. Really? Let me see. I was quick to make the most of this chance to touch her bare feet. She stretched both legs out on the sofa and peeled off her nylons to show me. I put her feet in my lap and clasped each one of her toes in my hand, one by one. They feel soft to me. You don't seem to have any calluses. You're not looking hard enough. Try pressing over there. Here? You see? I still haven't got rid of them completely. A ballerina's a pitiful figure, don't you think? There is quite a lot about feet in this book. If it's your thing, well, there you are. This might be quite the book for you. And that's it. That's the old Japanese man in decline, slowly becoming quite goofy over his daughter-in-law. And she is mercenary. <laughs> she just takes the money that she can get, and she knows how to get it. Someone was asking me if I would consider putting a video together about books, literature for people who they don't have a lot of literature experience and they want to start off with some of the easy stuff. And I am. I'm, I'm thinking about that list and I'm trying to put together a decent 10 books or so. These are some great books to get into literature, but I've made so many compilations recently. I don't, I don't want to make another big one. So that, that is a little bit for the future. For Japanese literature, I think this is a, a fun place to start because very easy to read. It's a diary. It's an old man writing his diary and it is pretty much there on the page what is happening. It, it's fun. It's 
a bit sad. Is there an aspect of the unreliable narrator in there? Mm, surely, surely. But I think I would need to read it again to to pick up more of those uh, fine details. I'm I'm not I'm not one of those smart guys that gets it all on the first read. You know, the first time I read it, I generally get the big picture. And then later when I read it the second time, okay, now I'm beginning to see the, the nuance. Is it hard to read foreign literature? Uh, I think it is, if you don't have too much practice at it. I think it can be hard. And I was thinking, why? Why is it hard to read? I think the first barrier is the names. People's names, uh, Satsuko for a woman and Yokichi for a man. If you're not Japanese and you've never spent any time in Japan, those names might be a bit hard to come to terms with. You know, like as an English speaker, if the character's name is Andrew and you've known Andrews in your life, you're going to latch on to that character named Andrew much quicker than you are going to latch on to somebody named. But I don't find Japanese literature to be the worst. Like for me, Russian literature. Like those Russian names are just, it's, it's not because it's one name, it's because it seems that every character has a dozen names that you've got to remember, like um, Ilyovanich, Grigor, Vasiliev, Medvedev, and his, his father calls him Sasha, and his friends call him Kevin. Yes, reading foreign literature can be quite hard, but I think that we need to stick with them. You know, some of the very difficult books that I read, The Tin Drum by Gunter Grass, but I don't think that one was, well, was it difficult because of the characters' names? Or it's just a very, very difficult book to read. Russian literature, but you can't let it intimidate you because if you don't like characters with the name Raskolnikov, you are going to miss out on reading one of the greatest examples of Russian literature there is. Not my favorite though, really no. I don't know, I don't know if any of that made sense. I have no idea. Bottom line, if you are looking to get into literature, while we're talking about feet today, if you put your toe into the water with some American literature or Canadian or British, and now you're, you're looking to get your feet wet with some international literature, because the, the feet in this book is pretty strong. This is a great place to start with Japanese literature. I think we all know what a kimono is, yeah? And the belt they use to tie the kimono, that's an obi, O-B-E. Okay, you guys know I have an affinity for Japan, Japan, because I'm gonna be living there in a few years. Oh, Christ. Uh, some of you have been making use of my Amazon link to buy the books, thank you very much. Thank you very much, because whenever you follow my link, and you use it to buy something, not just the book, but anything, anything you buy, I get a little fraction of whatever you spend. So please, and think of me, think of me whenever you do any shopping on Amazon. Like if you're buying snow tires, because that's a very good idea if you live in Canada, please say, oh, Grant, Amazon, and just go to my link and buy the snow tires. And I'll get a little, little piece of what you spend. If you're worried, you know, like if you read this book and you get some foot ideas and perhaps you want to spend some money on some erotic material, I, I don't see what you buy. Like I don't get a list, you know, saying that, um, you know, Liam is buying a foot monthly. I don't, I don't see what you're buying. And even if I did see what you were buying and you were buying like a lot of really dirty stuff, I wouldn't judge you, all right? I'm open-minded because sometimes when you're in a stale relationship and when you um, try to spice up things in the bedroom, there's nothing that does it quite like a, a multi-speed programmable vibrating dildo. If you're gonna buy one of those or even a dozen, I don't know, you know, you do different sizes. Follow my link and I, I don't even know anything about it. Just says you spend some money. It takes all kinds to make a world. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Have a great day. This is Grant Loves Books and that's all. get it the first time? I'll try it one more time. There's nothing that spices things up in the bedroom than a, a multi-speed programmable vibrating dildo. I've been practicing. Right? God damn, can you hear that?
Let's wait.